Okay, so welcome everyone to our talk today. We are going to talk about TAG Contributor Strategy, which is a CNCF technical advisory group focused on things like project governance, mentoring, contributor growth. So basically the work that we do is we help maintainers of CNCF projects be successful. And you'll learn a lot more about what all of this is as we go through the panel. So let's just start. Catherine, why don't you talk a little bit about what you've been working on within the TAG? Um, sure. Uh, I started out by joining the uh, Contributor Growth Working Group. I had just joined uh, Buoyant, uh, the creator of Linkerd. Was totally new to cloud, uh, not cloud native, to open source, um, and yeah, I needed to know a little bit more about community and how that all works. Um, and so, what the working group basically does, it creates resources for maintainers um, uh, around that cover governance, security, uh, project health, and much more. And but my background is in marketing, um, so at some point I shifted a little bit, and and now I'm focused on helping get a little bit more visibility to the um, tag because they do am amazing work. It's super important. More projects should know about it. Um, so that's what I'm focusing right now. But let's talk a little bit about mentoring. And um, so Nate, you lead the mentoring effort from the CNCF side. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, hi, yeah, I'm Nate, um, and I'm a developer advocate with the uh, CNCF and part of um, that means that I get to, um, I don't like to say that I lead it, I help, I help, I help run it um, uh, with, with this guy, Jay, uh, as, co, as a co-chair. Uh, and what we do uh, in the mentoring uh, working group is help uh, project uh, to find new contributors uh, through mentorship. So we help um, write up uh, proposals and, and help organize uh, our projects uh, to participate in things like Google Summer of Code or Outreachy or Season of Docs. Uh, and we also have our own uh, internal, um, internal as a part of the Linux Foundation, uh, we run mentorship programs uh, three times a year uh, with the LFX mentorship program. So uh, these are um, paid menteeships. So people um, who are the mentees actually get between something like $3,000 and $6,000 US, depending on where they're living. And it's a great way to have um, our projects reach out into the community and, and try and grow folks in a way where it, 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 it's a sustainable, inclusive um, uh, uh, program that, that we can continue to, to, to run for folks. Um, and, and of course, I already, I already spilled it. Jay here is, is my uh, co-chair. Uh, and has been doing a lot of interesting things in New Zealand specifically. Would you like to tell us about uh, your efforts there? Kia ora, yeah, thanks, man. Uh, kia ora, ko Jay Tihimo Toko Ingoa. My name is Jay. Um, yeah, so I'm co chair alongside um, Nate for the Mentoring Working Group. Um, I also work with IINZ, um, who invited me to um, try and create pathways for Māori into open source and um, hopefully develop a mentoring initiative out of that. But we found that came with its own challenges because um, not a lot of people are familiar with open source or cloud in general back in New Zealand. And there's really lo uh, low participation rates of uh, indigenous there as well. So um, I guess we adopted a, um, a contextualized design think approach and, and tried to develop a lot of uh, strategic partnerships working with education and industry and community groups and local government to see how we could um, take another approach to doing that. So we've been running like events and meetups and exhibitions and creating learning resources and uh, all sorts of things to try and um, raise, raise awareness and uh, you know, capability. And uh, now working with, also working with a Māori economic development agency called Toi Kairawa and we're working with about 30 schools across the region to um, look at it, approaching it from uh, an education perspective as well. So um, lots of good learning and um, we're I guess the, the approach is you know, to go wide but keep it really intentional um, and with the expectation that creating that foundation collaborative, collaboratively alongside others in the community is going to help to eventually develop a program out of that. So yeah, um, Dave, you're doing some awesome stuff with the maintainer circles though. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So I'm Dave Sudia, um, and yeah, I'm currently the, one of the people ma trying to facilitate maintainer circles. Um, within the tag, what those are, are they're sort of like um, 
educational sessions and round tables for maintainers. Um, and there's a broad umbrella there. It's really like decision makers. It, it didn't have to be like the person on the maintainer list necessarily um, within the projects. Uh, I actually just facilitated my first one yesterday, um, and it was on um, uh, with Rin here, um, and uh, who, who ran it. And so they were talking about how to improve like end user relationships and how to bring end users into your project and um, help help that communication be successful. There's also been ones prior to my time uh, on managing burnout, on integrating like the inclusive language standards into your project, that sort of thing. And there, um, there's usually sort of some educational presentation, but then it really is, you know, a space to be open conversations among maintainers so that they can problem solve together, discuss the issues that they're having, and help each other work on them. Um, so if you missed that one, uh, we're hopefully going to be doing them online uh, once a month-ish, and then we'll have them at KubeCons uh, as well in person. Um, Josh, you started the tag uh, and talk about you know why and and what you know if you're if you are accomplishing what you set out to do. Well, thank you. Uh, so. Uh, prior to starting this tag, um, I and my co-founders, uh, Paris Pittman, um, had uh, worked a lot in the contributor experience SIG of Kubernetes. And we looked at a lot of the stuff that we were doing to organize Kubernetes as a community and feeling that the rest of the CNCF projects really needed that um, and that we'd figured a bunch of things out in a way that we could actually template them. And, and like write down advisory documents and, and help set up processes that other projects, including a lot of smaller projects with a lot fewer resources, could potentially follow in order to have a well-run project. Um, this really appeals, I have a long background also in um, ops, um, and this really appeals to me for two reasons. One is that it's your basic sort of DevOps principle, which is you know everything that you can automate should be automated, and, and if it's not automated, it should at least be a template. Um, yeah, and I feel that really extends, and, and it's been very gratifying. We've had a kiosk here, and I've had a couple projects that I hadn't spoken to at all walk up to me and talk about which of our resources they were using, um, which is perfect. Um, the, um, the other reason why it's been super helpful is that this is something I also do for Red Hat. Um, I'm in the Red Hat Open Source Practice Office, and so I actually need to uh, assist and support a lot of projects. Um, you know, it used to be you're involved with an open source project, you're involved with one project. I'm involved with a couple of dozen. And, and at that scale, you can't have a lot of sort of handcrafting of everything. You need to come up with systems that work. Um, and so working through tag contributor strategy has really been helpful in terms of defining those, um, both for the CNCF projects and for the other projects that I work with. Um, so uh, one of the big areas where we've been templating stuff is governance working group. Um, and my main collaborator there is Don. Um, so Don, you want to talk a little bit about um, how you got involved in that and, and why you're still involved in that? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually, so my, my day job is I work at VMware and I'm responsible for our open source community strategy within the company. So I saw this contributor strategy tag and I was like, oh, that sounds like something I should get involved in. So I showed up to a meeting and Paris Pittman looked at me and she, she said, hey, we need someone to write the project health like how you measure project health guide and you know a lot about metrics you should do that and i was like okay now yeah, that sounds like fun so i got kind of got started that way so i wrote the project health measurement guide and then i saw all the work that josh was doing in governance which is something that i find really really interesting like how do you how do you have well run projects so i started getting more and more involved in in the governance working group and then getting involved in things like you know building templates and how to's so that's what's kind of kept me engaged in, in the tag. Um, Nate, what about you? Yeah, so um, I started at the CNCF uh, a couple of years ago as a techni uh, technical writer primarily. Um, and then um, uh, last year, uh, Ukraine got invaded by Russia and uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Ihor, uh, had to go and defend his country. And he had been running uh, the mentorship program uh, up to that point. And so my boss said, hey, could you, can you help with this? And uh, immediately put my hand up and said, yes, absolutely, I can help with this. This is uh, something that is interesting to me. So that's um, um, how I got into it. And I got into it without really having any background in community organization. 
And so at that point, uh, I said, so I'm going to need some help here. Uh, and so I looked at the, the, the tag and said, can we, can we make this uh, uh, a program uh, for the community by the community, and the uh, that's that's how we got started with the um, the working group. Um, how about uh, you, Dave? How, how how did you find this work? Yeah, so I work for Ambassador Labs. We've donated emissary ingress and telepresence to CNCF, and um, and one of the reasons I joined the organization is I was an end user of those projects. I was a big fan. I really wanted to help move them up the ladder through uh, emissary is incubating telepresence sandbox, and I wanted to help move them up, and so. Uh, one of the main requirements for that process is you need to have maintainers from multiple places and contributors. So I thought, well, contributor strategy seems like the place where I would learn how to do that. Um, and so I showed up to a meeting and, uh, and we were going down the agenda and Josh was like, yeah, we don't have anybody running maintainer circles right now. And I raised my hand. Uh, so um, it's that easy. <laughs> Welcome to open source. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, yeah, and so, so that's how I got started. Um, what keeps me engaged, I, I think, you know, uh, I've been, I was an end user for many years um, at coming to these and, and engaging the community. And I think, you know, now being, being uh, allowed the time to be on the other side and really be involved in the community, I think, you know, it's just such a great group of people. Um, and, and in this tag in particular is a, a really great group of people and I, I love seeing them every month. Um, but, you know, I think the work, like, I ran my first maintainer circle yesterday, and I think, you know, just being in there and seeing how much the people who came appreciated the ability to bounce ideas off of each other and, like, this facilitating that improvement of these projects was really fulfilling. And so I think, um, you know, yeah, it was, it was just a really good experience. Um, what about you, too? Cool, man. Yeah. Um, I was uh, invited by my good friend and mentor, Hippie Hacker, to... Um, to get involved and um, with pretty vague directions. It was, it was show up and, um, and see how you can serve, pretty much. And um, I guess what kept me there was, you know that saying, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're, you're in the wrong room? Mm -hmm. I always feel like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be because there's some very, very smart people um, and, I'm, and I don't have a tech background there. So there's a lot of learning. A lot of times I was just you know, trying to absorb as much as I could and... Um, you know, just, just try and um, glean what I could from a lot of experience and expertise, but um, also feeling supported. There's a lot of uh, very passionate, dedicated uh, people who, who, who have been very accommodating um, and, and helped me to sort of get a better understanding of it. And, um, you know, for me, I see this as a big opportunity um, for people not just in New Zealand, but, but globally to sort of, um, I guess, redefine how you get into to the tech space. and. Um, you know, from tag, there's you know, a lot of networks and experience and um, obviously a really strong sense of community and then from Māori Dim, you know, we have values like, you know, tanga and, and tūakana teina and a hōtutu mentality, basically how we can serve others and, you know, be disruptive and innovative in the process and I see, you know, some alignment there where, um, you know, there's, there's opportunity to make a difference. So for me, it's, it's really easy to you know, to keep showing up and staying engaged. So yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, Catherine, how about you? Yeah, so as I mentioned before, I had just joined Boyan, new to open source, I needed to learn about community and work the work, uh, the, joined the working group. And so I created two resources I needed, right? So I needed to learn, have a broad overview of how communities work. And so one thing that's really great about this tag is that it gives you resources to learn, right? Like, so I interviewed a bunch of maintainers from different projects who were very generous with their time, uh, shared best practices, lessons learned, and I summarized that and basically contributed that to the tag, right? And then I did another one. Uh, we, were, we have a community CRM I'm familiar with CRMs, not with community CRMs. And I was like, I'm not sure how this works. So uh, also did some interviews. And two were with two founders from these, uh, from two different CRMs, community CRMs. So you really get the opportunity to talk to people who would otherwise not just talk to one person who wants to learn individually for their project. But if you tell them, hey, I need to learn, uh, but I want to share that knowledge with the community, suddenly people are very, very willing to, to talk to you and really take a lot of time. And so, and also like, 
my like for me like the best way to learn is by well teaching others or kind of like like summarizing things like explaining things that you learned breaking that down and so for the process like like i learned a bunch from a lot of smart people and uh, so that is something uh, that I think is a huge value in this tag to get the opportunity to do that um, as a member, right? Um, but at some point, um, as I mentioned, I, my background is in marketing, so um, community is a part of it, but it's not, I'm not as in the weeds as other people here uh, on this panel. Um, so at some point I was, I didn't know how to contribute anymore to this tag. Uh, and um, I felt a little bad and I don't want to be sitting in a meeting and not contributing because like I want to provide value and I don't think I've mentioned that before uh, <laughs> to this group but I kind of wanted to leave because it was like there was not nothing more that I could do but I felt really bad because the tag was still new so not a lot of people were in the meetings everyone was so nice uh, <laughs> and I really believe in the mission I think it is such an important mission and and then I realized you know, the reason I feel bad to leave is because there are a few people that is an awareness problem. And guess what? That's a marketing thing, <laughs> right? So I was like, oh, you know what? I can actually use my marketing skills to kind of help get more visibility to the tag. And also know how to navigate the CNCF, know a lot of people there from the marketing side and how we can leverage that. So that's what I've been doing. Um, and what keeps me engaged, of course, like the people uh, and Again, the mission. I think it's so important. We always talk about community, but we're so much fo so focused on community within our projects. But the CNCF is our home, for all these projects, right? And I think we need to do a better job, and there's so much we can do if we really kind of create a cross-project community where we all learn from each other. Um, we have so many open source projects. Uh, and basically, whatever challenge one project is facing today, there's really good chances that someone else <laughs> uh, faced them today. So there's really no way and no need to reinvent the wheel each time. So if we provide these platforms and the maintainer circles are like an amazing way to do that, we really can learn from each other, right? And um, yeah, so that's, that's what keeps me engaged. What about you, Josh? Yeah, well, <clears throat> I just really like to see things run well. <laughs> I'm, I'm one of the people the, um, that, that there's something I always call the dirty sink principle, which is that if you live with a bunch of roommates, the person who scrubbed the sink is the person who really can't stand a dirty sink. I'm, I am the person scrubbing the sink. Mm -hmm. And so I want to set up some way that the sink gets cleaned regardless of whether or not I'm there. Um, and, um, and, you know, in, in terms of community management, in terms of making sure the CNC projects run well, um, that's been tagged contributor strategy um, uh, to set up good systems, to to set up ways that that the easier path is to run the projects well, um, rather than that being the harder path. Um, and and for that matter, it's not just doesn't just you know uh, benefit me philosophically and, and like by my mental orientation. It's also my job um, uh, because uh, my employer is heavily invested in the CNCF, um, and we want to see projects there do well. Um, because it benefits our downstream business, um, and um, and so you know at the scale that the CNCF is at, um, uh, the tag contributor strategy is really um, help me work with other people to develop systems and ideas and share knowledge to make sure that things work well. So Nate, um, how is how is your involvement with tag contributor strategy help you get your new job done for CNCF? Well, and that's and that's one of the things. I'm 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 also very lucky in that my job uh, I work for the CNCF. Yeah. So this is this is all literally, uh, hey Nate, do this. <laughs> so it's a part of. Um, but I tend to demur when people say, oh yeah, you lead the 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 the, the mentorship program, uh, and part of that is because when I first started in on it. Right, that was not a part of my skill set. Community management, uh, leadership. I was always one of the folks doing stuff, right? Not sort of trying to figure out how to help other people do things. And for me, one of the things that I gained from this group and and, and working with the, the tag contributor strategy is is learning how to uh, help folks help me to help other folks. <laughs> if I can, if you can parse that, you're uh, doing well. Um, but it really is, and it comes back to, to, to everybody's talking about community, and it, it really is uh, being able to, to, to 
help people start on their careers, um, which is a lot of what the mentorship uh, winds up being, but then helping other people sort of learn how to, to coach and mentor um, is something that um, has really sort of, um, I think, for me, and it, it's, it's maybe not, like I'm still in the same position that I was, so it doesn't necessarily um, help move my career yet, but it's one of those things where I'm hoping that um, as I move through my career, uh, I'll take sort of the lessons learned here about leadership and, 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 and um, helping and we'll be able to help sh help share that with other folks to help move their careers forward too. So, um, Jay, how about yourself? How, uh, what, have, what have you learned doing all of this stuff? <laughs> uh, what haven't I learned? Um, <laughs> look, I, I um, feel like I, I stand on the shoulders of giants and as I mentioned before, one, one in particular is Hippie who um, opened this world to me in the first place. I don't have a tech background at all. Um, you know, my experience has been with uh, youth and career and community development. So when I was invited to, to be a part of this, um, yeah, I was pretty overwhelmed, like really appreciative of the opportunity, but um, really unsure about what it was I was able to do to, you know, there's going to be of any sort of um, value. And um, one of the things that, that have used to assure me of is that, um, you know, it's not about technology, it's about culture. And um, I, I really appreciate that that's, you know, continually sort of resonated in, the, in this sort of work. And, um, you know, having support of, of you know, wider team and the tag, obviously, it's done a lot to um, obviously connect new people, change my perspective. I mean, I'd never heard about open source before getting involved either. And now I can see um, pretty much that like the transformational potential that it can, you know, bring to, to schools and communities and businesses. Um, and having an opportunity to be part of that is huge. So, um, and I want to be able to bring that to other people as well, you know. Um, this is my first KubeCon, this is my first time in Europe. Uh, we just got a student in, uh, into the LFX mentorship. There's another one following close behind now. Um, you know, there's, um, you know, tertiary education providers looking at how they could, you know, perhaps bring cloud into curriculum. So I think, you know, I can see the changes starting to sort of take place. And, um, you know, it's, I guess, I mean, anything could go from here, but um, the prospect of, of looking at better ways in terms of how to bring others into it is um, yeah, continually sort of motivating. So, um, yeah, it's a big deal for me. Um, Dave, what's your experience, man? Yeah, um, you know, so if you were at karaoke last night, you may have inferred that my original career attempt was a uh, rock star. Um, but uh, lead singer. <laughs> Thank you, Blur. Um, <laughs> um, but, uh, but uh, you know, as, as I went into my professional life, I learned that professionally I, I, I'm more of a drummer. Um, and I like facilitating other people's success. Before I was in tech, I was a public school teacher. Um, and then, you know, when I went into tech, I ended up in DevOps. And it's sort of, you know, like the engine that makes everyone else work better. Um, and so, you know, I think the, 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 the next part of my career journey with this is really, um, you know, I, don't know, I think there's some phases, at least for me, in terms of engagement with the CNCF where I kind of came in and was like, oh, open source and this is a mission. And then you kind of go like, but most of it's a vendor hall. Um, and, then, and then if you step further through that, it's like, oh, but there really is a really cool mission here and people are doing amazing work and we all just really want to build cool stuff and support each other in doing that. Um, and I think, but you don't get that unless you engage. Right, and so I think that was the thing for me was the more that I engage, the more I get back that feeling of like, oh wow, we're doing amazing work here, um, we're empowering people, and so um, so I think the thing that the learnings for me have been how to best do that in this organization. Like one of the very first things I did was remove people from a list uh, that was done rudely, uh, <laughs> and kind of learned like, oh okay, here's how I operate in terms of communication and talking with people, and 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 one of the things I love about this organization is like. No one got mad. It was just sort of like, hey, man, that's not how we do things. I was like, oh, OK, cool. Right? And you just, um, and then that's, I think, speaks to the quality of people here. Um, and then the organization brought, you know, largely. So, um, you know, and then, yeah, I think the other piece of it is uh, you two can raise your hand in a meeting and then two months later be featured on the CNCF keynote stage. Um, <laughs> so, um, be, and be glad native famous. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, but it, I think it's it's just there there is so much to learn and and to Jay's point, um, you know there are there are so many people here who want to share knowledge um, and who want to who who, who want to to uh, help you out. So um, yeah, what about you, Don? 
Yeah, so one of the really cool things about being in this particular tag is that you get to work across all of the CNCF projects. So one of the things that, that I've uh, spent a lot of time learning and have been really fascinated by is just looking at, in particular, the governance work that we've done, the templates, the how-tos, which, which bits of those work well for certain projects, which ones don't work well for others. And so it's been a constant learning experience about what works well for certain types of projects and what doesn't, which has allowed me to kind of carry that back to VMware when I'm providing guidance for our own open source projects around things like governance and contributor growth. So that's been really fascinating to be able to see this really at, at CNCF scale. So that, that's the part I think that I've, um, a lot of what I've learned. And then from a, you know, from a career perspective, just like the, the people you meet, the networking, I got to do a keynote at KubeCon, which I never thought I would get to do, and it was directly related to the work that I do within this, within this tag. So I think from a career standpoint, just the, the network, the people, the, the community, I think is really beneficial from a, from a career perspective. Catherine, how about you? Yeah, I mean, like I can only um, second that. Like, it's really incredible how many people you get to meet from different companies, from different backgrounds, different uh, countries, and it's really rewarding. You learn so much, right? Um, and you really start building this amazing network, and I feel like, I don't know, if I were to lose my job today, you know, like I have a bunch of people who know me in a professional setting who have seen my work ethic, and uh, doesn't guarantee that I would get a job right away, but at least, you know, I know people would kind of make an effort, right? And and that is somehow, like, really reassuring, right? That, and um, and I also think that there are like a lot of benefits from non-code contributions that are not as prevalent in code contributions. And uh, Dawn already mentioned one. She had a keynote yesterday. Josh and I had one uh, last KubeCon, uh, and uh, no, last year, actually, in Europe. <laughs> and, and I don't know, I two years ago, I've never done public speaking at all, and it was crazy, you know, it's terrifying, <laughs> it was exciting, an opportunity I never expected that to happen, right? Being on this panel with uh, amazing people, um, sharing all our, our experiences with you um, is, is, again, rewarding, it's great, and as I mentioned, like, you meet people from all over the world, we have Jay here who is from New Zealand, literally the other side of the world, all of that is, yeah, very enriching, and I think a lot of people think about when they think about contributing, it's like giving, right? You are giving. Uh, but I I don't know, I feel like I'm getting so much more that I'm putting in. So um, I don't know, once you start, it's almost like an addiction. It's like you don't want to go back. So uh, on that note, it's like, yeah, I mean, like anyone here wants to join our tag, you know, like there are like all these places where you can find us. Um, it's, yeah, I I can only recommend it. Yeah, of course, it comes down to, there's a reason we're telling you all this. Not, not just to make you feel good, but also um, because the CNCF has, I don't know, whatever it is, 150-something, 160-something projects. Um, you know, um, the, um, uh, you know, a whole bunch of groups and committees, all of those projects have their own individual needs. Most of them are led by technical maintainers who don't necessarily have a lot of time or energy to do management stuff. <coughs> Um, and so we really need more people in the tag, um, you know, facilitating being that catalyst um, to help maintainers help each other um, and to help maintainers find the resources that they need. Um, uh, and we've got a to-do list in the form of issues. It's probably 40, 50 issues long. Um, some of them are quite substantial things. You can pick up something today if you want to. Okay, so we have reached the end of our uh, prepared questions, and we have six more minutes if you all have any questions for us. Anybody want to ask a question? Yes. Oh, wait, we need a microphone for the recording. Uh, thanks. Yeah, so, um, you know, as a uh, maintainer and, and steering committee member of a couple different projects, I was very excited about this. Uh, you know, I've heard of the tag here before, and I know a couple of you as well. Uh, and you know, I know you all are doing good work, but I, I haven't had a great amount of uh, you know discoverability or visibility into the work. I haven't actively sought it, but um, you know, I'm kind of wondering 
for next steps here to start taking advantage of all the wonderful resources that you all have invested into? Um, like, is there like an index of, hey, here's the project health, uh, you know, metric stuff. Here's the governance template stuff. Where, where is all that stuff? And is it behind Catherine's head, by the way, the learn more one? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. got it. Awesome. It, it, <laughs> Yeah, I'll say um, there's two main places to actually start, um, leaving aside just like dropping by the channel um, and asking us stuff, um, is contribute.cncf.io, and you click on the link that says, I want to be your Emma maintainer, um, and there's a whole bunch of stuff there, um, and there's the project templates directory um, that has a lot of the templated stuff for things that you need to set up for your project. Uh, yeah, um, and the other, um, I don't Always got, I'm always thinking about mentorship. So um, the other place you can look is uh, mentoring.cncf.io. Um, and I, I wanted to mention earlier, but missed it on my own notes, is that um, uh, graduated projects, incubating projects, and sandbox projects are all eligible for mentorship help. And uh, so that's, that's uh, available uh, to you as well. I found the maintainer stuff, I think, like a couple of weeks before I joined the, the, the first meeting that I joined. But I, one of the things I've found is like, because I've been looking at cncf.io since like 2016. And it's one of those things where, like, you know, you work on a project for a while or you use a tool and then you just get the way, used to the way you're doing it. And then you don't realize that they've released like 30 features. You know? <laughs> you know? And um, oh, I could have been doing that better. Um, and so I think it's, it's always worth it to me to like just go back to cncf.io and click around some of the menus because someone's like, oh, I didn't even know that that, that, that existed. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it actually is pretty easy to get to the maintainer information. You just, but it, if you don't even know that it's there to look for it, then it, yeah, it's harder. Yeah, and we've just reorganized some things to make things a little bit easier to find. And Ali's been working on updating a bunch of old crusty stuff that we didn't realize was quite as out of date as it was. So, so that site's actually looking pretty good. So if you looked at it even a week or two ago, there have been a lot of changes. Any other questions? Yes. So basically, I'm sold on the idea to, to, to join and contribute. Yes. I'm not sure if your tag or the previous one that was in this room about sustainability, but maybe both. Uh, nice. But yeah, it's uh, it's not about me. It's about uh, my company. How to get uh, the company that uh, is not yet sold on open source, that uh, is not an IT company, that is uh, uh, energy company, um, uh, that has a very strong IT uh, department. How to get uh, the company on board when we will not do any products that we can sell as Red Hat, for example. Uh, in the open, uh, so the contribution that we will be giving is uh, something that we uh, develop uh, in-house, but then probably also something that we will never use in-house. Yeah. Who can I talk to uh, within CNCF on how to s sell that in my company? I, mean, I have a personal recommendation. I don't know. It's a, a someone to talk to in CNCF. And so even as someone who I'm in, I'm in a DevRel position now, my job is to like, it's kind of, I'm the person, one, another career thing is like, I did this and then my boss was like, why don't you just be the marketing contact and everything else for CNCF? Um, but but uh, I think like even within that role, there's only so much that my boss is like, yeah, well you can have the time for that, right? And so when I, um, I was talking actually about doing a second thing here in the tag um, and I took that to me and he was like, well, you know, why don't you essentially like take your personal growth training time for that, right? Like, so if your job has any kind of like benefit, or if they would have, you know, maybe if they would have given you a thousand dollars a year to take a course or something, you can be like, guess what? I'm going to save you the thousand dollars, but I need a couple hours a week, or, or not even a couple hours a week. It's a couple hours a month, really, right? And so you might be able to kind of take it from that a side angle like that, where it's like maybe part of the training or, or you know, personal development kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's that's one idea. Yeah, the other thing to do is to actually look at the software that you depend on, right? Because if, presumably, if you're, if you're here, your company's at least using cloud native software. And particularly, actually, as an end user, stability upstream is even more important to you sometimes than it is for a vendor. Um, because if the stuff breaks, you have no ability to fix it. Um, and so, you know, you can sell it as hey, I'm working on making sure that all these projects that we depend on are stable and that we don't need to worry about them. So I think we've reached the end of our time. We would really love it if you would provide feedback on the session and tell the CNCF how 
awesome it was and how much you loved our talk. That would be great. So if you could do that, that would be fab. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. We have a kiosk downstairs. Well done, Ali. In the Project Pavilion. So if you want to come hang out with us, we're there in the second half of the hours. So there's a different kiosk there in the morning. But we'll be there um, this afternoon, tomorrow afternoon. So, so come down and chat with us, hang out with us, ask us questions. It'd be great to see you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.